Welcome in to this week's edition of Reading, Writing, and Arithmetic here on KWN-TV. We welcome you uh, in January and a little bit cold outside, but this week we're going to be talking about the Dade County High School. Each week, of course, we take a different school here in Dade County. We highlight some of the activities that are going on. We welcome uh, today Holly Moore, oh, way over to my uh, to my right is a representative on the school council mm -hmm. at the uh, at the Day County High School and also uh, a parent of a uh, child that goes to the school. Welcome. Thank you. And we, uh, I hope you don't ask me anything about speaking Spanish because I wouldn't have a, I wouldn't have a lot of clue anyway. But uh, Philip Bell, who is the uh, Spanish teacher at uh, Day County High School, he's going to be on the show with us today. We welcome you. Thank you very much. Looking forward to it. Today we're going to talk a lot about the upcoming election that's going to be March the 1st, and that's the Special Purpose Local Option Sales Tax Vote. It's actually the East Blosh here in Dade County. Uh, this particular uh, vote will be coming up to um, basically ask for a continuation of a East Blosh, and that would be for education, an, ex uh, an education special purpose local option sales tax that we're already receiving, that we're already collecting now, and th that tax is scheduled to run out. So we're going to be asking the voters uh, that will be on the ballot when we go and vote this, uh, this time around on our presidential uh, primary, March the 1st, uh, we'll get an opportunity to ask uh, for, for us to give the okay or not the okay to continue this East Blast. And Holly and um, Mr. Bell is going to be on with us today. We're going to talk a lot about that, uh, the Splash, and what some of the uh, effects that you see inside the schools and, and different things. So I, I mentioned, Holly, already that this, this tax, it's a penny mm -hmm. on all the goods and services that are taxable by Georgia law. That are collected here in in Dade County, right. that go for um, uh, uh, capital projects, if you will, through the Splash Program for Education. Now, this is just going to be a continuation. Correct. Yes, and hopefully, when this is passed, this money will start collecting July the first of two thousand seventeen. So. Um, that generates about one hundred eighty-five to one hundred ninety-five thousand a month for the school in revenue, which is a big chunk. It is a big chunk. <laughs> well, we've had this type of tax for a great number of years now. We have. Uh, we have a seven cent tax right here in Dade County. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them happens to be the e uh, educational spot. We also have a uh, another splash that's on put on that the voters approved for the county government. Mm -hmm. So that same amount of money goes to the county for capital projects, and the school gets mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. one cent. And uh, then of course then it brings it down to the the state gets there for different different you know how it's all uh, kind of calculated there. But tell us a little bit about the current splash and. Now, it's still being collected. Correct. Yeah. Um, the one we're going to vote on will be number five. So this would be our fifth splash, you know, available for education. Um, the previous splash money has been spent on uh, technology, uh, projectors, iPads, software, hardware. Uh, since everything's going technology-based, uh, those funds were available to supply the need of the schools for the, of that. I've also used it for building and grounds. Um, several things which we'll talk more about in the CTAE programs um, and then just equipment and general maintenance throughout each of the schools in the county. Now one of the things that they're always bringing up about Splash, Splash there's only certain things that this money can be used for. Yes. It cannot be used for any continuing paying of salaries Correct. and benefits for any type of employees. So uh, none of the existing employees with the Day County School System are paid out of this fund. Right, correct. that is correct. Yeah, all the, all the employees of our, of our school system here all receive uh, their funding through um, 
either funds that come in from the Department of Education from Atlanta or federal funding. So the SPLOST is not going to, you can't say it's going to anybody's pocket. It's not uh, providing any salaries or anything for any of our employees, whether they're teachers, whether they're uh, custodians, bus drivers. Uh, no one receives a salary from SPLOST funds. It's all improvements, technology, uh, improvements on our buildings, maintenance, um, textbooks. Uh, if you just drive around and see any of our schools, um, if you go to the high school where I work, um, the construction that was done in the front for added security, things like that. If you go to our audiovisual department and see all the, the cameras, much like what we see here in the studio today, uh, just incredible amounts of technology and, and uh, advanced, advanced technology. We're not talking about little tablets and laptops here. We're talking about stuff that you would find in any of our television stations here in the Chattanooga area. All that a lot of that uh, improvement has come through the SPLOST. And so uh, I'm definitely sold on it, and I'll probably talk more about that here in the future in just a few minutes. Well, some, some of the things you hit on them, if uh, and, and a lot of people will look, the uh, uh, some of the things that are at the high school, like the, the, the track and, and the different things were, were built, the, those are capital projects. Mm -hmm. uh, those are capital outlay projects that, that have been built uh, without having to use uh, general fund or right. in the lack of a property tax money, mm -hmm. basically, mm -hmm. uh, to be able to do that. So I want to talk a bit, maybe uh, you can shed some light on some of the things that they're looking to, sure. looking to do as <laughs> as this goes on. Now, once again, this will be coming up. A lot of people say, well, I didn't realize we were voting anything for the pre uh, except for the president. But I think the school board, when we announced it, that wanted to make sure that it was on the ballot where we would have the opportunity to put it up for a pass or fail vote mm -hmm. and uh, that there would not be any elapse of collecting that money if right. the voters chose to go ahead and, uh, and vote to continue that. That's correct. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Yep. Uh, so as the voters in Dade County go to the polls coming up on March the 1st in the presidential preference primary, whether you vote on the Democratic presidential preference or the Republican prefer preferential preference, or, now a lot of people may not know this, but if you don't want to vote for either one, you can still go vote for this because mm -hmm. it is actually going to be on the ballot that day. So let's say you don't want to, I guess, vote in the presidential preference. You don't have a right. preference on either side. Mm -hmm. You can still go vote yes or no on the tax. Right. Be able to do that. We're talking about the special purpose local option sales tax. It is for education. Uh, Dade County has two of those: one for the uh, government side, one for the school government side. And we're going to be op uh, asked to go vote uh, for a continuation of this coming up here in just a few weeks on the presidential preference primary, March the first here in Dade County. I'll be back. We're going to take another. Uh, we're going to take our first break of the show. We'll talk more about Splunst and the e East Blast here in Dade County after this. Hi, I'm Randy, the safe guy from Randy's Pawn Shop. You know your gun collection is worth a lot of money. Protect your firearms from fire and theft with a Liberty Safe. We have only the best at Randy's Pawn Shop, and Liberty Safes are top of the line. They use state-of-the-art manufacturing process, giving you a high-quality safe at affordable prices. Liberty offers interior lights and accessory door panels. No wonder Liberty is America's number one safe manufacturer. Come see me, Randy the Safe Guy at Randy's Pawn Shop. I'll protect your guns and peace of mind. The Tax Clinic is now open in a new location as part of the Boss Business Center, 29490 Alabama Highway 71, right across from the ball fields at North Sand Mountain School. With over 40 years of experience, the Tax Clinic provides year-round tax and payroll services. The Tax Clinic urges you to start gathering documents so we can help you file your 2015 tax returns. The Tax Clinic, now part of the Boss Business Center, located at 29490 Alabama Highway 71. Open 9 to 5 Monday through Friday, Saturday 10 to 2, 256 597 3829 for the Tax Clinic. Taking care of whatever ails you in the tax world. The Moore family name has built a legacy of trust, compassion, and peace of mind by standing with families during time of loss. Now in our 70th year, the Moore family commitment grows even stronger from affordable traditional services to cremation. Our experienced staff stands ready to follow through on you and your family's wishes. Since 1945, the Moore family of funeral homes, North Sand Mountain and Trenton, always dedicated to those we serve. 
When you need a licensed plumber, call Stacy Ledwell and the staff at Mr. Reuter in Scottsboro. Mr. Reuter provides your home or business with advanced solutions using high-tech equipment. Our commitment to customer satisfaction shines through in our personalized service. When you schedule an appointment, our professionals will dedicate time to explain the work that has to be done. Our staff will give you upfront pricing, so you'll know exactly what's involved before any work begins. We even pump septic tanks and do new construction on houses. Fully licensed, bonded, and insured, Mr. Reuter in Scottsboro. Call Stacy Ledwell today to set up an appointment at 256. 256- 574-4710. Randy's is reopened as Randy's Country Kitchen. Back at Randy's Country Kitchen is our famous seafood buffet from 4 till close on Friday. And Randy's Country Kitchen features an all-you-can-eat pizza and salad buffet every Monday and Thursday, 4 till close. You get pizza, salad, and a drink for only $8.95. Randy's Country Kitchen, now open Monday through Saturday, closed on Sunday, and delivery is available at 657-5330. Pizza, strombolis, and roasted chicken are back, too, at Randy's Country Kitchen. Highway 136 West at the foot of Sand Mountain in Trenton. Convenience is always on the way wherever you go on Sand Mountain with the Smart Mart on Highway 301 South and the Higdon Shell Mart on Highway 71. Both locations featuring fast convenience items. Make sure to stop in and enjoy our wings and the best pizza from Hunt Brothers at the Smart Mart on Highway 301 South or at the Higdon Shell Mart on Highway 71. And if you're in Marion County, get the same convenience and all your fishing supplies too at R&R Bait and Tackle on Highway 41 just up from the Marion County Park. All the news about Jackson County with Jackson County's Chamber Chat every Tuesday night at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, right here on KWN-TV. Back now to reading, writing, and arithmetic. Each week we take a look into the, uh, one of the different schools here in Dade County. This week we're talking all about the high school, but we're also kind of breaking it down and talking about the East Blosh that is coming up. We've got a couple of representatives. Holly Moore, who uh, wears a couple of hats. She's a parent of a uh, child that goes to Dade County High School. She's also a representative as a business member on the uh, newly formed council that uh, that all of the schools, each individual school, then we're not talking about the PTO and we're not talking about anything. These are councils, basically, that uh, have actually been in the state law for a great number of years but have just now formally been established mm-hmm. over the last year to uh, to let uh, parents and business folks to have a little bit of insight and um, a voice if you will Excellent. on the running mm-hmm. of uh, each individual school and uh, these, these these councils have been up and running now this school year yes and uh, Let's talk, Holly, uh, and also, of course, uh, uh, Mr. Bell, who is the uh, Spanish teacher at the high school. We're going to talk with him just a, a few minutes and get a teacher's perspective of what he can give us out of the classroom. But, Holly, talk a little bit about the uh, the uh, vocational programs and things like that that the Splunch has already aided, but you hope yeah. it will in the future. So um, the high school has... Um, six CTA vocational programs right now and I think uh, two or three of those have moved on down to the middle school so that upcoming sixth graders or current students now can participate in those kind of pathways as they call them at the high school and then continue that on into the high school um, years but those those include health occupation engineering audio tech construction electrical business information technology and a new one um they're looking at starting is agricultural and horticulture and uh, and for those uh, i don't know mr bell how you've been in the school system for a long time and i know holly and both of i grew up here the uh the uh, horticulture and that would actually be going back to an old one and it would. well they're adding the something to that this year uh well when they start that program it's going to be ag mechanics and then animal science as well so that's you know for the farmers and uh you know the big farms that operate around the country that's that'll be pretty interesting for these kids that are more of a hands-on learning experience well we've seen this we've seen the shift over the last several years go to uh trying to educate if you will everybody to go to college well i think we figured out that everybody don't go to college that's right you know and uh and you've got a great percentage of uh of students that uh that don't don't and will not go to college but they need some type of vocational Absolutely. avenue to go down and you're seeing some of these programs to uh 
um, to enhance their education to be able to do that. You've probably seen that on a teacher's level change. How long have you been teaching? I've been a teacher for four years and a substitute and a para-pro for another six years before that. So you've, mm-hmm. you've seen in, in 10 years already a significant amount of changes. Quite a bit. Quite a bit of changes. It seems like college or a university degree um, was um, the golden apple that everybody you know wanted or thought expected their children to obtain but definitely in the last 10 years there's been a whole change in our mindset when we realize the reality that we've got some extremely gifted talented young people but who will never set foot one day in a college campus or in a college classroom uh, and yet they will be very uh, successful uh, very driven uh, and so we just want to give them all the tools and all the preparation they can have while they're under our care to have that success as soon as they get their high school diploma and go out into the work, work world. Well, the C, uh, CTAE programs, I hope they got that right, CTAE, yeah. that's right, vocational programs. Uh, Dr. Ken Trail, who is the vice principal at yes. the uh, at the uh, high school, kind of he uh, heads this up on both the middle school and the high school level. He does, yeah. And, and, and does a great job from what I understand. Uh, uh, the, um, the vocational side of things have... Uh, relies a lot on this money absolutely yeah um actually i spoke with dr Kentrell last week and um getting some prep work for this but um the engineering lab um they're looking at remodeling and adding uh different types of equipment that would accommodate our local industry here so that kids are able to uh come out of the program maybe go into one of our industrial facilities and go to work and uh, be able to you know familiarize theirself with the equipment and operations that we have well <laughs> you, you in the uh, in the business side of things and the business industry uh realize that uh our our community with uh your company and others like yours as well as uh the vanguards that mm-hmm. are building and mm-hmm. going to expanding understand that gills looking to expand yep. there's going to be a, a there is a great opportunity oh, our absolutely. unemployment is is the lowest it has been in five years you know and uh, uh they're they're trying to find jobs and we got 400 that are that's coming just around the corner right. mm-hmm. so being able to uh, to equip the students graduating uh, a little bit more uh is only going to be a plus for the community. If I could also jump in, if uh, you mentioned Dr. Cantrell, our vice principal at the high school who is heading this up, talking about a prime example of someone who who uh, personifies the CTAE. Oh, yeah. You think of many people <coughs> hear that, that title, Dr. Cantrell, think this is a man who's been a career educator his entire life. This is a man who upon graduation from high school, served in our military, mm-hmm. was a general contractor, did construction for approximately 20 years of his life, did actually, didn't actually go to college till he was in his 30s. And so here's a guy who could look back just on experience and then <laughs> his calling, his vocation as an educator, and uh, a one who is extremely gifted on putting the pieces of the puzzle together to help these young people who aren't planning on going to college, but uh, who are going to pursue this this vocation, this career in their life. So I think we're uh, very blessed to have someone with his background yeah. to kind of steer the ship. Well, we, we've seen the uh, the programs expand both in the middle school and the high school. And uh, with these different grants, I think Dr. Kentrell's wrote a couple of mm-hmm. different grants that mm-hmm. have been approved. And, and, uh, and, and, of course, that comes along with the technology, the technology grant. And then we've got uh, the engineering grant that's uh, been put in, I think, at the high school and mm-hmm. the middle school. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, uh, that technology, phew, I'm telling you what, I'm just sitting over here on the side. I mean, you know, we're sitting here on a television uh, program that's about education, but yet, right now, we're able to, on a little thin piece of glass, go into everybody's home in four counties. Oh, yeah. Instantaneously. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, to me, it blows my mind, right. you know? Yeah, well, you know, in our, our school system, we're we're going bookless in the next few years, so, so all of us who are used to these big, thick, fat books, they're going to be obsolete so it's all going to be on those laptops or tablets and 
my my 11 year old can outwork me any day <laughs> he comes and asks i'm like oh i don't know just go ask your dad or call somebody else i have no clue yeah so it is kind. Of, it is kind of funny. I, I I tell people. I said when they started putting the alphabet into math problems, that's where I got. <laughs> yeah. I got I'm lost at that point. But uh, we're going to take another break. We're continuing talking about Dade County High School this week, but uh, kind of zeroing in on the vote uh, on the vote that will be coming up uh, for the uh, continuation of the East Blast for the uh, Dade County school system. And and this uh, East Blast is for the entire Dade County school system, not just for the high school. We're going to take another break. We'll talk more coming up right after this. Doing your taxes yourself is just not a good idea, especially with changes in the Affordable Care Act and college tax implications. Nancy Anderton at NL Tax and Bookkeeping has been serving the Tri-State area since 1978. Let NL Tax and Bookkeeping use their knowledge and expertise to get you the correct refund fast. Ask about direct deposit and fast returns. NL Tax and Bookkeeping is open 8.30 to 6 Eastern Time, Monday through Friday, and 8.30 to 2 Eastern on Saturday. 500 Alabama Highway 73, 7 miles from downtown Trenton. Call today at 657-4758 or 597-2829. Friend us on Facebook at NL Tax for the latest tax information. Dobbins Supermarket, serving the community for over 70 years with fresh cut meats, fruits and vegetables, and a full line of grocery items. Dobbins is known far and wide for their signature sausage in four flavors. At Dobbins Supermarket, you'll find local home folks serving the area's weekly grocery needs. Dobbins Supermarket, Highway 71 in Higdon. This week at Dobbins, split chicken breast, $1.29 a pound. Beef chuck roast, only $3.99 a pound. Boneless smoked pork chop, $3.99 a pack. And bar ass sandwich ham, $1.99 a pound. Only at Dobbins Supermarket. A small bank with big service. Citizens Bank and Trust. Offering a wide range of services, including online banking. Pay your bills. Manage your account anytime, 24 hours a day. Your account balance is only a phone call away as well at 657-1234. Or visit our convenient locations. Look out Mountain, Georgia, Higdon, Alabama, on our main branch on Highway 11 and Trent. Citizens Bank and Trust. 657-5678. A community bank that believes in the community. Citizens Bank and Trust. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Take the speculation out of your legal questions today by calling Legal Services. Now open in Dade County, providing paralegal and attorney services. Legal Services can prepare your will, health care directives, living wills, power of attorney, contracts and legal agreements. Legal Services can help you with all of your criminal and family law needs. Open weekdays 9 to 5. After hour appointments are available. Don't worry about your legal position. Call Legal Services today. 708-4362. Highway 136 West, Foot of San and Mountain Legal Services. Licensed Georgia and Tennessee. Looking for that next new-to-you ride? Well, Rayburn Cloud at Cloud Auto Sales has just what you're looking for. Check out an 08 VW Passat, 2.04 liter turbo, real nice, only $5,995. How about an 04 Ford F-250 Super Duty 4x4, 5.4 liter V8, runs and drives great, only $6,995. Or an 04 Pontiac 5, gets great gas mileage, only $3,995. See Rayburn Cloud today at Cloud Auto Sales, Alabama Highway 71 in Higdon, 597-3273, or like us on Facebook for Cloud Auto Sales. KWN Live and Local TV, the home of the Jackson County Tournament. Join us for tournament action right here on your Live and Local TV station, KWN, as the Jackson County boys and girls battle it out both JV and varsity. You'll watch all the games right here. It's the Jackson County Basketball Tournament right here on KWN TV. Check your local guide for times and days of the Jackson County Tournament broadcast on KWN TV. It's Rick and Bubba on TV. Every morning at 6 a.m., every evening at 6 p.m., and every night at 11.30 on KWN TV. Back now to Reading, Writing, and Arithmetic, a weekly show here on KWN TV where we look into Dade County schools. Uh, each week we highlight a different school. This week it's uh, Dade County High School. And of course, we got uh, Mr. Bell, who is the Spanish teacher and also a parent at the. Uh, at uh, Dade County High School, so he wears a double hat here today. Holly Moore also wearing a double hat. She is a parent of a student at Dade County High School, and she's also the one of the business representatives on the uh, newly formed high school uh, council that each school has uh, 
uh, that uh, for the operational um, insight into the uh, in each each one of the schools. So Holly, I know that we we talked a little bit about the CTAE, the programs that they have, the vocational. We talked about the buildings and the the uh, the, uh, the different facilities and 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 things like that, but. Uh, fine arts. I mean, fine those, arts. Yeah. Um, bill, uh, band uniforms. I mean, or excuse me, band uh, instruments. Yes, that's one of the things Splash Money goes for is band instruments. Um, currently, the high school band there's about seventy members. Uh, they have ten graduating, but the upcoming eighth grade class has thirty kids. So we're talking ninety kids, and they've kind of outgrown their space at the high school. So that would be a possible wish list item for the high school with Splash would be uh, a band expansion. Uh, along with that, you have art, band, chorus, drama, and sports training. Now keep in mind, uh, for those of you watching, uh, the eSplash can only be used for capital improvements. And by virtue of a capital improvement, it has to be something that uh, would be like a bulk uh, expenditure for band uniform or band uh, instruments, instruments, instruments or buses mm -hmm. or a building of a building uh, or renovations. Um, I mean, so multi -purpose it's multi-purpose facility. Multi -purpose, I mean, there's yeah. all kinds of uh, there's restrictions on what the school board can use the money for. Correct. They can't just roll back property taxes. Right. Absolutely. Talking about fine arts, I don't know if any of our listeners and viewers have. Uh, participated or attended any of the uh, recent musicals the high school has put on and uh, we have some incredibly gifted and talented young people not just in our high school our middle school and and we're seeing this in our, our children our elementary ages but in our high school um, the musicals where the kids are singing and performing and dancing and uh, um, our auditorium in our high school you mm -hmm. wonder how long has it been since they've had an upgrade on their sound system? <laughs> uh, because all of these kids are singing and speaking, and you know they all need to be mic'd up and uh, kind uh, of like what we have yeah. here. And Some splash money was spent on the sound system uh, because of of that need, and they've had some great performances over there. Uh, we well, went last year. One of the biggest things that if you've been in a Dade County school classroom. And I'm going to let you talk to this. We've only got a couple of minutes left. But the uh, Perithium boards oh, yeah. that uh, that when I was the uh, I was one of the guys that used to take out and, and get the erasers, you know, right. and clean the erasers and stuff. They don't do none of that anymore. If you've not been in the classroom lately, but the Perithium boards that uh, the teachers have were also another expenditure out of the East Lodge. Tell us a little bit about that. Talk a little bit about you being a teacher and a parent combo at the high school. Well, I have a quote uh, in my room by Ben Franklin where it uh, talks about, speak to me and I'll forget, teach me and I'll learn, involve me, and then I will progress. And these Promethean boards, this is where you get the kids out of their desks, out of their seats, getting up and doing what they're supposed to be, the, the knowledge they're supposed to be assimilating, whether it's a math program or whether it's English and writing, whether it's foreign languages, getting them involved in the learning process. And children return so much, retain so much more when they're hands-on involved, whether it's an academic class or whether it's one of these uh, technology classes or fine arts or whatever. So uh, we have this advancement in our school system primarily because of the splos that we've had in the past. And so this is one of the reasons why we really want to encourage folks to really consider continuing this in the future. Well, and that's one of the things that it will be. It'll be a continuation. Now, on the other side, uh, it is a tax. Uh, you have to look at it as the fact that it's a continuation of a one cent tax that we pay now on everything in Dade County when we go to purchase any kind of uh, uh, any kind of merchandise uh, at all, whether we go in uh, services or restaurant, one penny of every dollar that you put in goes to these type of things that we've talked about. It will, by law, end, but this will be a continuation that starts in 2017. July 2017. July. So, mm -hmm. you know, 
this is a, a, a an opportunity for those of you at home that's a registered Day County voter. You'll get a chance to go and let your opinion be felt, mm -hmm. whether you'd like to see this continued, where the one cent will still be able to be continued collecting for capital outlay projects for the school system or not. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a it's a process that the voters get to decide or the actual citizens, registered voters will get to decide on this. So. We thank you all very much uh, and very informative. Hopefully you've learned a lot. Uh, if you have questions, I know that any members of your Absolutely. council mm -hmm. would be able to uh, uh, help them. Mm -hmm. You can call Diane at the high school. Just another thing we'll put on her <laughs> that you can call Diane and say if you'd like to know more information, they can get you in touch with uh, with Holly, uh, Mr. Bell. We mm -hmm. appreciate you coming on too. Our pleasure, both yeah, of definitely. you. We appreciate you watching as we uh, look into the schools. Uh, uh, my uh, my memory is not like it used to be. Mike, do we know who we're going to have next week? what school we're going to be uh, going to be highlighted and guess what I don't feel bad now because Mike <laughs> just went around in the control room he did <laughs> so I, that was a sprint I was going to look bad at, you know if he who was it Dade Elementary. Dade Elementary so we'll break down what's happening in Dade Elementary coming up next week once Good again deal. thank y'all for being here thank you and thank Sorry. you for watching another reading writing and arithmetic